Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. My name is Mike Davies and in this video I'll be showing you how to design a hexagon or honeycomb logo using Inkscape. I did just perform this tutorial in GIMP so I'll be showing you how the same process goes down inside of Inkscape. Before I get into that, don't forget to check out my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, I have tons of GIMP and Inkscape tutorials on here. You can get more by becoming a DMD Premium member. And I have tons of free software help articles, so definitely check that out. And you can use code 15OFF2020 by the end of this year to get 15% off your annual membership. And I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. I'll be using this free font for today's tutorial, and I do have a separate tutorial on how to download and install free fonts. So here is the logo we'll be designing for today's tutorial. This is a vector logo, so we could scale it up or down pretty much infinitely. I'll be using a custom palette for this. I do have an entire tutorial dedicated to how to import custom palettes in Inkscape, but let's get started here. So I'll go to File, New. Here we have a blank Inkscape composition and I'm gonna change the document size by going to File, Document Properties. And under Page Size, I'm gonna scroll down until I get to the video section. I'm just gonna go with HD video, so 1920 by 1080. And I do wanna change the display units here to pixels. So let's exit out of here. Now we have a 1920 by 1080 document. So the first thing I'll do is create my hexagon shapes. Let me hold control and zoom in with my mouse wheel to zoom in a bit. So I'll come over here to my toolbox and there's a tool called Create Stars and Polygons. I'm gonna click on this tool and under New, I'm gonna choose the pentagon shape, but for corners, I'm gonna go with six corners. This is going to create a nice hexagon. So I'll click and drag my mouse and I'm just gonna cant this to the left so it's at a slight angle and release. Once I've done that, I'm gonna come over here and grab my select tool and I'll hit Control D to duplicate this and click and drag this down and this should snap the nodes together. So these two shapes should just easily snap together. Make sure you have snapping turned on over here on the right side. And you may also need to ensure that snap nodes, paths and handles is turned on. But we're gonna do this one more time. So Control D and we're just going to click and drag this in place like so. And there we have our three hexagons. I'm just going to click and drag over all three of these. Control G to group them. And I'll come over to Align and Distribute, which you can see the shortcut key for that is Shift Control A. You can also come over here to this little triangle menu and you'll see Align and Distribute is right there. But I'll make sure this is set to relative to page. And I'm just gonna come over here and click to center align this along the vertical axis. And that's gonna align this to our document. I'm also going to click on the handle and drag it inwards while holding the control key. And that's just gonna scale this shape down a bit like so. And once again, let's drag this towards the center and just double check that this is aligned by center aligning it. Next, we're gonna add our text. So let's grab the text tool and I'm gonna click on my composition and with the caps lock key on, I'll type honeycomb. Now I'll select all the text by hitting control A and I'm gonna come up top here and I'm going to change the font. So the free font I'm using is called Bourbon Grotesque. Strange name for a font, but I'm gonna click on this. That's going to change my font type there. And I also need to increase the size of the text. So I'll come over here and just type 75 and hit the enter key. Finally, we don't need this line height, so I'm just gonna get rid of that, but we do want some kerning going on, some spacing between each individual character. So I'm gonna type 10 there and hit the enter key. So you can see the little icon for this is just two characters spaced apart. It says spacing between letters. So there is our first set of text. Now we're gonna click off to the side to create another line of text. And with the caps lock key still on, I'm gonna type logic. That's the fictitious name for this. So now what I'll do is I'm just going to come back here to our first line of text and hit Control A and Control C to copy it. Then I'm gonna come back here and I can double click on this line of text and I'm gonna hit Control Shift V and that's just going to paste the styling from our first line of text. That way we don't have to go through all those steps again. And now what I'll do is just click and drag a guide from the rulers and place this. 
So we're gonna align our text to this guide. So let me come over here, grab the select tool. And so I already have my first line of text still selected. So I'll shift click on the second line of text and let's just drag this down. So we're gonna drag the first line of text down to this line. Then we'll come back to align and distribute and go to relative to. And we selected the second line of text first. I'm sorry, we selected it last. So I'll go with last selected. So relative to last selected, which means it's going to align to the first line of text. And then we're just going to align to the bottom edges. So there you can see these are both nice and aligned now. I'll click off of here and I'm just gonna click on the first line of text and drag it in like so to fix some of the spacing there. Shift click on both lines of these texts. Control G is going to group our text and we're just going to align this to the page real quick. So let's come over here to relative to and go with page. And once again, we will align this to the vertical axis. All right, so now we have our shapes up here, the honeycomb shape and then the text. Let's color this in now, let's style everything. So for starters, I'm going to click on the group here and I'm gonna hit Control Shift G to ungroup this. While everything is still selected, I'm gonna come over here and choose a stroke. So shift click on a color. We're gonna change this color later, so it doesn't matter what it is right now. But now what I'll do is I'll click off of our shapes and I'm just gonna color each one of these individually. So I'll click on the first shape and come down here and left click on the light blue color. Come back to the shape below, left click on the slightly lighter blue color and that's already that color there. So let's come over here to the final shape and I'm gonna left click on the dark blue color. Now what I'll do is just select all of these again and I can bring up the fill in stroke with shift control F or I can just come over here and click on one of these swatches. So you'll see it says fill and then stroke. Click on one of those swatches. That'll take you here to the fill in stroke dialog. So I'm gonna come over to stroke style. First, let's change this to pixels. And I'm just gonna set the width of all of these to 10 and hit the enter key. So there we go. Now I'm gonna come over to path, stroke to path, and then control shift G. So that is going to convert all of our strokes to a path and it's going to ungroup the path from the original shape. So the reason I'm doing that is now I wanna add a gradient to these. What I'm gonna do is just select each one of the hexagons first. And now I'll go to object, objects. So you'll see here we have all of our objects that are selected. I'm just gonna lock these hexagon shapes. That's just gonna make our life easier for right now. Then I'm gonna click and drag over all these again. That will select just the strokes. So once these three strokes are selected, what I'll do is come over and grab my gradient tool. And I'm just gonna click and drag this tool from the upper left corner to the bottom right corner. This obviously doesn't look the way we want it to look. So what I'll do is while I'm still clicked on this end point here for the gradient, I'll come over and click on this orange color. So that'll change that first color there from the gradient. And then I'll come up top. I can always click on this end point right here and do the same thing. So just click on a color. In my case, this is already the color I want. So now we're gonna add gradients to the text. So to do that, we're going to grab our select tool again. Let's hold control and zoom out and just put this into view. So let's start with the honeycomb text. We're gonna click on this with the select tool. Control shift G because these are groups, so I just need to ungroup them real quick. And click off of here and click back on my honeycomb text. So let's come over and grab the gradient tool. And now I'm gonna draw the gradient from the bottom up to the top. And I'm gonna hold the control key to draw this in straight line mode and release. So we wanna change these colors. We're on the top end point here. So what I'll do is come over and click on the light blue color here, and then come down here to the bottom end point, left click on that, and come over here and left click on the dark blue color. So there we've got the colors there that we want. Let's grab the select tool again, click on the logic text, and I'll hit the G key to grab my gradient tool, and we're gonna draw this once again from the bottom to the top holding the control key to keep this in straight line mode and release. So we have the top selected here. Let's left click on this orange color, come down here to the bottom end point, click on that and go with the slightly darker yellow color there. So now our text has a gradient. So I'm gonna come over here, grab my select tool, 
The last thing I'll show you for this tutorial is just tweaking some of the sizing for the logo as well as adjusting the shape position. So you'll remember that we locked the three hexagon icons here or the three hexagon shapes. We can unlock these over in the objects dialog and then we can click and drag our mouse over all the shapes and hit control G. That's going to group everything together. Now I can come up top here to my little rotate icons and my flip icons and I can just sort of play around with the positioning of this if I wanted to test out different positions of the hexagon or the honeycomb shape. And also I can click and drag over all my text and I can either decrease the size of the text or increase it depending on how I want this to look. Let's go with that right there, control G. That'll group these together. Come over to align and distribute and just make sure that's centered up. And if I wanted to, I can also click on here and just use the arrows on my keyboard to move this up or down. And let's just select everything, control G to group it all together. And we're just going to center align this on the page. Let's get rid of the guide and there's our final logo. But that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.